door. It's settled and I've, I've got much more of an idea of what I want to do with my life now. Um, I feel much warmer as a person, which I think is reflected in the community as well. Here at Manchester, the techniques and tactics developed at road protest sites are being used to challenge the building of a second runway for the airport. It's a colossal project covering a thousand acres. Where we're standing now is going to go under the tarmac of the runway. It'll stretch for about two miles down to your right and eventually will cover an area of land about three times the size of the Newbury Bypass. What about sort of the impact on local economy, though? It's going to create a lot of jobs, supposedly. Well, the airports say that, but we've heard figures from 50,000 to 18,000 to 8,000 was quoted in the inquiry. And at the end of the day, all the figures have in common is that they're going down. What's local support like? Fantastic. There's sort of an informal network of housewives who come down and bring us food. We had um, Terry Waite, who's a moral leader of our times, I think, for definite, down here last week giving weight to our cause, because there's a lot of people who feel locally they're not listened to. The political process as it is is not listening to people's concerns. Our representatives aren't representing us. The media loves to portray us as either heroic eco-warriors or terrorists doing battle with the forces of law and order. But that's all nonsense. The changes we campaign for are inevitable. We're not extremists, merely pioneers. The suffragettes, the American civil rights movement, the people who stormed the Berlin Wall, like us, they were just ordinary people who realized that morals and motivation are enough and their time had come. Future generations will look back with horror and amazement at the destruction of the post-war era, but they'll have a special resentment for those of us after the mid-80s because we knew the damage we were doing, yet we still did it. Protesters may be dissenters, mavericks, even minor criminals today, but we make great ancestors. My vision of this land is of a love of what it is and the life that lives and will live on it. If the people building these roads had a lifespan of three or four hundred years, if they had to live with the long-term consequences rather than just the short-term gains, I doubt whether they'd be doing this. So how dare they inflict this on us and our children? If they're to continue to do this, then my only moral position is to put my heart and mind and body in the way. I hope it'll make them take long enough to realize the horror and the idiocy of what they're doing. If not, then I stand proud that I did my best. Merrick Godhaven, with a point of view you might have agreed with or that might have made your blood boil. Tonight, the heart of the matter is not so much about the rights and wrongs of building roads, but the rights and wrongs of stopping them through direct action. Joining tonight's debate, Peter Bottomley, who, as a transport minister, had to take decisions about which roads should be built. George Monbiot, international campaigner who's won a UN award for outstanding environmental achievement. James Bartholomew, an outspoken columnist who believes obstructing road building is unacceptable. And Mary Godhaven, whose views we've just heard. James Bartholomew, the protesters are the righteous ones. Ordinary society is full of, and I quote, careerism, selfishness and sleaze. Well, there are very many delusions in this film, self-delusions, vain delusions, but the greatest of them is the illusion that this state is so undemocratic that it would be pointless to work through the demo this democratic state, that People have worked very hard in this country to create a democratic state. People have, have died creating a democratic state, including, for example, the suffragettes. And having created that state, much suffering in the process, people go to the lengths of getting elected. They create parties. They create new parties. We've seen new parties created recently. They, they go for causes, and then what happens? These, these what I regard as eco-vandals rather than eco-warriors, come along and bully their way, try and bully their view across without getting to the ballot box, without trying to go through the democratic process. I regard that as an enemy of democracy, not part of democracy. Peter Bartomeu, you were making many of the decisions as minister. These people were trying to stop on the ground. And they say they're worth any number of you elected representatives. You've rigged the system. Well, they're welcome to say it. And in a democracy, you can say what you like. It's one of the great things about democracy. But the only point they don't seem to have really appreciated leaving aside the merits of whether roads are a good thing or a bad thing, is that democracy means you accept defeat. Democracy is not always about winning. It's about being willing to accept you lose. I once went in for direct action, admittedly with the approval of the police, or at least the, uh, 
being accompanied by the police, in blocking the traffic on the A2 every Friday night at five o'clock with mothers with prams who thought they ought to be allowed to have their children grow up without traffic flowing past them 24 hours a day. You obstructed the traffic? We went for a walk on the roads, which is perfectly legal. If we'd done it for 24 hours a day, I think it would have become illegal. But to do it for an hour a day in rush hour was legal. And so it, led, it, it, hang on, it, it led to the first action of Ken Livingstone's GLC approving the building of the Rochester Way Relief Road. So you took part in direct action at the expense of other motorists. You obstructed them, even if it wasn't criminal obstruction. And yet you're complaining when other people take direct I, action I themselves. haven't gone to my complaint yet. I've explained about democracy, that those who believe in democracy but won't accept defeat don't really believe in democracy. George Monbiot, self-appointed zealots are not the answer, however the imperfect democracy. Well, I think Peter's suggesting that self-appointed zealots are the answer if they're protesting in favour of a road rather no, than against the road. Um, the public inquiries which lead to roads are a complete sham. The decision to build a major trunk road like the Newbury Bypass is taken before the public inquiry begins. So the problem is that the first opportunity people have in this democracy to register their protest against that sort of road building is by lying in front of a bulldozer. You're saying the first opportunity is in the ballot box. That's the first opportunity. That's the opportunity that you have decided not to attempt to take. No, I attempt that as well. The trouble is with just using your vote is it's a very crude, it's a very clumsy mechanism indeed. I have a complex message. So it's crude and clumsy, therefore you shouldn't use it. Oh, therefore no, use you it should well. just take the law into your own hands. Therefore you should cost other people money. Therefore you should increase the taxes of old people. Therefore you should stop people going where they want to go. I mean, just because it's crude is not justification for causing so much inconvenience and expense to other people. You made a very interesting point when you were first asked, asked by, by, by Nick to respond to the film. You said the suffragettes helped to create the state that we've currently got. And having created it, there, that's fine, we can just lean back, be complacent, the state's just absolutely fine. The suffragettes thought, fought tooth and nail against people, just like yourself, who said, things are just fine, we don't They're, need to change the it. Suffragettes the suffragettes didn't, yes. on, the suffragettes did not have the, the vote. The, 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 things are different now. There was not a universal franchise, there was not a universal vote. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It is surely different to take direct action to achieve democracy than once democracy has been achieved to usurp democracy and take direct action. I think it's an extraordinary idea that the public's role in a democratic system stops after they've put a single cross on a piece of paper no, no and they like don't that. have a role in that system no again for like the next no five like years. Uh, democracy has to be something in which the entire public takes place as uh, t takes part in as often and and to as great a degree as possible and i would suggest that what we have been doing in places like newbury in the roads protests uh, all around the country is is exercising showing the force of public opinion and let's face it the country is behind us it's because the country is behind us that the government has changed its policy so dramatically it's because the country is behind us that two ex-ministers have now turned round and said you the protesters were right all along the difference between us and ministers is that we're wise before the well election. james well, Bartholomew, let me ask you hang on, let moment. me ask you james Bartholomew, if you would never take direct action never I mean, you like cars. Supposing you get a parking ticket for something you haven't done, you're outraged about it, you think this is disgraceful, are you going to meekly pay the ticket or are you going to say, no, I'm prepared to stand up and appoint a principal, even if they take me to court, even if they say this is illegal? Well, I, I'm not particularly attracted by that particular example, but there are There are times, circumstances there are where circumstances you would break the law. Where I would break the law. If, for example, uh, we had been successfully invaded by the Germans, and this was a German-dominated do state. Oh, but that's, again, democracy it... removed. Now, let's say within the democratic right, okay. framework... Well, even within the democratic framework, there will be times when I would consider breaking the law and consider that I was right to break the law. So even you don't take an absolute position no. against merit? No. They, it, in the end, it must be decided on the merits of the case. There must be an... I think, though, in a point about democracy is that it must be an extreme case before you are justified in taking the law into your own this, hands this, this and costing Hang other on, let, people let's, money let's hear and stopping you think... people being able to travel about their lawful business. Merrick, you think this is an extreme case. Do you understand that many other people do not? That many other people are turned on and impassioned by things that you don't think are important? And that if everybody took their extreme cases, if everybody was fanatical about their own special interests, 
then there'd be huge groups yeah. of society it, breaking the law. This is not my own special interest. This is, I mean, we're not just out there because we, you know, it's, it's 30 people in the woods who like some trees. This is, this is all about it's, it's the way we treat the environment. I mean, Manchester Airport is an enormous project. There's a few people living there with massive public support. It's about the conditions of life of the people who live around it. It's the people who are going to live there in future. I'm not just doing this for me. But other I'm doing, people I'm doing feel this strongly. Yeah, but just think about, you and your hang on, just think about other issues that other people feel strongly about. Fox hunting. Okay, you've got people who are strongly opposed to abortion. You've got people who are strongly opposed to all sorts of things that happen in our society, not just roads. Are they all right to regard this as such a moral, such a profound moral importance that they can break the law? They kind of work through the, the democratic system has to be used first and when your other options run out non-violent direct action has in fact a long and noble history in this country of making people aware of issues and making change. The, the problem is that if we go, the plan inquiries are loaded completely against us. I could show you about that many letters I've got from my MP and other people in Parliament, which are one paragraph, three lines. I know your comments. Now look, you're saying that work. in the week, Merrick, in which Narex has just had a huge, long planning consent turned, uh, re request turned down at what could cost them something like £400 million. It said this is colossal. So plainly, the, the inquiry system isn't rigged. Well, there's a lot of different sorts of like inquiries. Like we're talking about two completely different yeah. sorts of inquiries uh, when we're talking trunk roads and when we're talking nuclear. Uh, at Newbury, they only the asked which route the bypass was going. There wasn't a no road option. They didn't ask about park and ride. They didn't ask about putting the freight on the railways. They didn't ask any traffic you calming. Were boasting, you were boasting in your film about how much money you were spending, how much money you were costing people. In order there to are people, save pensioners, who more. pay tax at £4,000 a year. You are taking money from those people. No, I'm not. Yes, no, you are. No, we're taking money out the roads budget. It, it, it decreases but the roads budget, so less projects happen elsewhere. It's not the just the roads budget. budget. It just comes out of the government budget. Billion. It comes and out of you, all government spending. If you want to talk about government spending, Right. The, the, all the forthcoming major road projects in this country are DBFO stuff. And we're not being told how much taxpayers' money is being spent on those. From parliamentary questions that have been answered, we know it's three to five times the cost of construction. And this is being... And you're railroad, about how much it's and with, This is being railroaded. You want to talk about wasting taxpayers' money. That's a massive giveaway of public funds you are, to private hands. You are spending hands. government money you and you are not elected to do so. The DBFO that project. is what it's is undemocratic. I think the protesters on £40 a week if they're drawing dull or not receiving any state funds at all, have, in saving the country £17 billion... Drawing let dull, me finish. Let me finish. Really have in saving the general have public. In saving the country, are drawing dull and have, using it could you to let spend finish, more please? money on, on the, could you to let me finish, police please? them. I mean, they're double spending. They're double excuse, me, excuse me, please. And they're lying to, excuse me, please. to their social security offices because they are un under an obligation the, to seek work. I think that the protesters, who, on very small budgets, have saved the taxpayer £17 billion by cutting back the roads programme, have um, provided considerably better value for money than our Members of Parliament on £43,000 a James Barthelme, I mean, it's undoubtedly true that they have had an effect. You're complaining that they've had an effect. Indeed. Now, think of other complainants who've worked within the law. Think of, for example, the, the pro-life campaigners who feel passionately about and against abortion have walked, worked consistently within the legal framework and arguably have got almost nowhere. Now, aren't these people right? It is best to work with the ballot box but with direct action as well, rather than simply going along with... In terms of being effective, procedure. you're absolutely right. They have been effective. And, but I regard this as something that must be opposed. I regard it as a great cause not to protest but to oppose the protesters, because the defence of democracy lies in opposing them. George Monbiot. I think what we're doing is holding politicians to account in a way they've never been held to account before. In fact, we are restraining a government-imposed anarchy which has reigned in this country for far too long, where MPs, having got the cross on the piece of paper, think that for the next five years they can do what the hell they like. Well, Peter, 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 Peter Bottom. The, 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 the whole series of things, if one's having a, a, a continuing discussion, the first is that some of these arguments were used by Oswald Mosley, who didn't represent the majority. If we could get a majority in a particular area and start a movement which fortunately didn't get very far in this country. And if you start going for popular action, I can think of a number of causes where I would oppose it even more strongly than I try to point out some of the inconsistencies in the way some of these direct action protests have been treated. You don't show someone like me, and I don't sort of focus on me because I think my successors and predecessors did the same thing saying that the Brighton bypass should actually have a tunnel through Southwick Hill rather than go straight through. All the schemes we didn't do, 
In this country, we only build roads which are necessary, not just desirable, no, that's unnecessary. Not that's not we have true. less, we have less, we have less road building in this country. We had criticism year after year we weren't building any motorways at all. I think we tend to lose balance, and people like you help us to lose it. In order to make up for Can I just, hang on, no, no, let me just ask Merrick something. If you're so absolutely right, and you're certainly absolutely cocksure, why can't you win an election on the principle? Why can't you at least even win a by-election on the principle? Why does the electoral process always defeat you? It doesn't defeat other people in society. The elections have been about roads issues. The elections are about a whole basket of issues. Exactly. Of which roads are only one. And now we find, we've, because we've made people aware of such issues, we have things like the Road Traffic Reduction Bill in a diluted form, getting passed the other week in Parliament. Now, people wouldn't have even been aware of the issues it wouldn't have been, if it hadn't been well known because of direct action. If I'd written to my MP, as I've done all the time, yet again, just said, you fobbed me off last time with three lines saying, I note your comments, will you do it again? And they would have done. No one would have known. James, you can influence through the democratic process if you're willing to take the time. Well, one of the things, the one of the things was said in the film that it didn't like the democratic process because it took so so long. I mean, it is frustrating being decent and civilised. It's not the only way they're telling you. Do you accept that there is a role, then, for direct action? Well, I think in a democratic society, it has to be an incredibly good case. I don't think the Rhodes case is an incredibly good, good case, because I think it's actually an extremely bad case, and we need more roads, and that this kind of direct action is going to result in terrible jams in this country in five, six years' time. So far, we've been talking about non-violent civil disobedience. But is violence ever justified against property, or people. Last summer, a jury at Liverpool Crown Court cleared four women of causing one and a half million pounds worth of damage to military aircraft due for export to the Indonesian government. The women had argued that they were morally right in using what they described as reasonable force to prevent the Hawk jet being used against civilians in East Timor. Joanna Wilson, one of the four women, joins this part of the debate. Joanna Wilson, the jury acquitted you, but you confess quite openly that you took part in criminal damage. Explain what you did. 